Hello, everyone. This is Lubos Pichl from CFD Support. And welcome to the webinar about the new TCFD release, uh, version 1910. In today's webinar, we have good news for you and more good news and only good news. We have spent an enormous amount of time and effort to deliver once again a new, better version of TCFD. And in today's webinar, we would like to share with you the news. Uh, so uh, I hope everything works well. We are running live, so in case of any technical problems, feel free to contact us and we will gladly answer all your questions and comments. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and its recording will be made publicly available. Uh, at the end of the webinar, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. So feel free to ask your questions anytime during the webinar. Uh, you can find the question form in the menu and it will be a pleasure to answer your questions at the end of the webinar. And I think this is going to be it. I think it's time to, to get to the action. So please let me start with uh, the webinar speakers. So this is me. My name, name is Lubos Perkla. I'm co-founder of CFD Support and my current job is telling the world about CFD Support. And I am here in our Prague office with my colleague, Radek Matsa. Hello, Radek, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello, Lubos, and hello to everyone who is watching us. Uh, so are you ready, Radek, for, for the webinar? Yes, yes, I am ready, and I'm really looking forward to introduce all the new features and functionalities implemented in this version. So, okay, thank you. So I will... I will note that Radek is our head engineer and uh, senior developer here at, at CFD Support. And uh, let's let's continue. So the webinar is going to take about uh, one hour, depending on the number of your questions and our comments and etc. There will be a few sections in this webinar. In this first part, I will give a brief introduction of TCFD and our company. In the second part, uh, Radek will present the particular new features and capabilities of the new TCFD 1910. He will describe it a little bit more in detail. And finally, in the last part, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. So feel free to ask your questions anytime during the webinar. Some questions will be answered right away in the webinar. The rest will be answered later uh, via email. So you can be sure that, that all the questions will be answered. Uh, okay, so I will start with a quick introduction to our company. So uh, our company is called CFD Support. We celebrate 10 years this year. Uh, our headquarters is located in Prague, Czech Republic. CFD Support deals with engineering simulations, mainly with computational fluid dynamics. CFD Support provides following services. We deliver consultancy projects all across the, the whole CFD field. And uh, uh, originally, CFD Support was founded as a consultancy business. So for that reason, we still deliver open phone training and we provide uh, technical support and custom code development services. Uh, but what's the most important here is that a few years into the consultancy business, we, we felt our clients deserve more. So we decided to launch a new project a software product, a CFD code called TCFD. We have put all our skills, our experience and passion into it. And today our mission is developing the simulation software with the best value cost ratio in the whole market. So this, that's what we do at CFD support. And um, yeah. The, this webinar is this webinar certainly shouldn't be only about us. It should be also about you. So I would like to ask you a question. I would I would like you to take away something. So I would like you to think. I would like to think about uh, what should be a great CFD software like according to you. So please think about it during this webinar. What do you think? What capabilities it should have? what user interface, what would be the way of using it, what would be the necessary user skill, what would be the level of customization, what would be the, the, the level of technical support, what are your priorities? Shall the software be quick first or shall it be robust first or shall it be accurate first? 
or everything all together or is it even possible just think about it in today's webinar you will see what is our opinion about this topic and later you can judge if it might work for you too so as already mentioned uh, TCFD is a comprehensive CFD workflow which successfully merged the benefits of open source with the benefits of commercial codes so due to the open source nature TCFD is unlimited and extremely flexible and due to the commercial code nature TCFD has a graphical interface a professional technical support it's robust it's accurate it's automated it's well tested and it's it's ready for use in in the industry so this is how the graphical interface look like looks like uh, the user can do everything here from the simulation setup to the simulation run and to the detailed post processing of the results besides uh, graphical interface of course also the, the batch mode is is available and TCFD can be for example run by by another software about the main applications uh, TCFD core business has always been turbo machinery simulations for example pumps TCFD can simulate many kinds of machines all the sizes both radial and axial machines of course fans and blowers and uh, hydro turbines and compressors and turbochargers also wind turbines and later what had worked so well in turbo machinery field we decided to extend for the external aerodynamics to simulate cars or the aircraft nowadays tcfd can also simulate the internal aerodynamics for example for valves or hydraulic valves or various manifolds intakes or piping systems the cfd is also capable to simulate propellers or ship hydrodynamics or wind loads acting on the surface of the building for example and newly the cfd can simulate heat transfer uh, flows and human human comfort for example the cfd is from the beginning developed in a way to fit the modern engineering workflows so it's fully automated it can be used either as a black box so the user can put the data in tcfd does its job and the user picks up the results at the end or tcfd can be used as a highly sophisticated software where all the options are open so i would say that the the, the beauty of tcfd is that it's the user who decides how deep to dive into cfd or not at all tcfd is from the beginning developed in a way to fit any existing workflow so it has strong integration ability because it has strong interfaces and it's very flexible in every enterprise the engineers usually have some existing working uh, or workflow already and and the cfd is capable to fit in it no matter what design tool is used no matter what cat tool is used no matter what meshing system is used the cfd is still here to fit any workflow to do the simulation and to deliver the results for users judgment or for further structural analysis or for the optimization for for example so tcfd is very flexible tcfd goes well together with very complex workflows like optimization loops uh, it's scriptable uh, trial version is available uh, real tutorials based on real projects we did in the past are available so we believe it's, it's pretty comprehensive we believe in the importance of technical support support is coded in our dna and also in the name of our company for 10 years we have supported the engineers in achieving their goals we are obsessed with professional technical support we have a special process for it and it's powered by the os ticket system the CFD is natively compiled for Windows and Linux operation systems, no need of any virtual systems. The engineering workflow is exactly the same on both systems. Our typical user does the case setup and the first tests in Windows, and then he or she moves uh, with the CFD on Linux clusters to use it on multiple co cores to fully benefit from the fact that the CFD is unlimited on the number of, of cores. Okay, so TCFD includes an automated 
meshing system based on snappy hex mesh and also the external meshes created in another software can be loaded so we always leave this decision up to the user so some some users prefer automated meshing uh, with snappy hex mesh the others prefer external meshes uh, that's fair enough we, we fully respect that uh, the tcfd has strong post-processing every simulation that is executed in tcfd has its own html report with uh, results uh, volume fields are visualized in para view the integral res results are always saved in csv files as you know software is never finished so tcfd is under continual development the development is it's never ending and it's it's users driven we continually gather the requirements from our from tcfd users and we evaluate them we keep adding them into the new tcfd version releases and we use special system for code development in a team which is called gitlab and in this this webinar you will see what 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 we did from from the last version Okay, so normally at this at this point, I I, I show the the benchmarks we did with with our clients, but I will I'll be I'll be quick. I'll be super quick here. So uh, we did a lot of benchmarks in past to show the the speed of con convergence and the the accuracy of TCFD. I'm not gonna go to the details right now because we have a lot of news for you, and Radek is is waiting for 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 his part. So I will really just skip all these studies maybe yeah maybe here i, I should say that uh, tcfd is able to fit in various workflows right there there are maybe hundreds of cae tools out there in the market and total number of the combinations is almost almost infinite so anyone can create his own workflow with tcfd that fits the best his purposes skills needs or resources yeah, TCFD is under continual development. The new version 19.10 includes more than 300 contributions. And as a result, the new TCFD version is once again better than, than it was ever before. Uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm not going to talk about the, the new features and capabilities uh, because there's someone else here who is more in it than me. So I will once again turn our attention to Radek. Radek, are you still online? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes, I, yes, I am still online. Right, right. You can so, hear me, yes. Okay, okay. So okay. I will, I will, I'm, I'm going, to, going to switch. I'm going to hand over the presentation over to you. So yeah, so okay. we are very curious what, what you have prepared for us. So would you be so kind and Show us what what's the new what's new in in version TCFD nineteen ten, please. Yes, of course, it will be my pleasure, of course. <laughs> okay, so here you go. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. So, <clears throat> hello to everyone again. In in the second part, or or in in my part, I will I will introduce you the main features and functionalities which were implemented into the new version among. The others, which are let, let's say a bit minor, and a lot of them are bug fixes and so. So I will be presenting just the major, major news in in TCFD 19.10. So he, here is the list of new features and functionalities I will be talking about. So some of them are are touching the new improvements of the graphical user interface. Some of them will be will be showing the new in in let's say the new possibilities of, of interactive model model analysis and and new and new physical properties of the simulations and the physics itself there we have implemented several new boundary conditions as well as new functionality to export some important uh, data on the surfaces mainly for for example <clears throat> finite element analysis and the last one in tcfd manager the transient residuals are included so there will be available for monitoring during during the simulation so i will be 
talking one by one, starting with a new layout of TCFD source menus. So we have a bit redesigned the menus in the TCFD source. So in the previous version, there, there was more menus and each of them includes all the setup and now we have a bit redesigned. So we have created six main menus. You can still you can still switch between the basic menu which, which is highlighted by this color and the advanced menu which is highlighted let's say in this gold color so you can distinguish in which mode <clears throat> you are working so this is the first first one so six main menus and each menu is split in several several sub menus we think that this approach is more and this new layout is more user friendly and more intuitive so and it is let's say you can i can say chronologically ordered in sense of cfd setup yeah so you can go from the top to the bottom without without any need to going back in the in the in these menus so this one is more and of course and for, for example, what is new that we added new boundary condition possibilities not only for inlets and outlets but also for walls for and for for interfaces. And I will be speaking about that later on in this part of the presentation. Okay, so this is the improved menu. So <clears throat> so uh, what I would like to say here that each if you if you work in the previous version then then the then you will be you will be able to to work much more faster because the menus are really intuitive now and easy much more easier to use for for a CFD for CFD users then we have implemented a new let's say small feature which can be handy so now because during the setup phase you should time to time save your current setup and this is now highlighted by the by the save button so if if the current state of the setup is saved then it is it is, uh, it is indicated by by the by this let's say gray gray button but if you change some something in the setup and you don't save it or you didn't save it then it is highlighted in color so i think this is nice nice feature then one of the biggest feature is now the interactive model analysis so now during the preparing of or loading the external geometry or stls for the meshing now we are able to highlight each part of the geometry which is i think really user friendly so i will show you for example on this on this example so this this is a new this is a new tutorial for for the heat transfer simulation and now if you go to the components part and if you click any part here in this um, <clears throat> in this table then it is highlighted and you can really follow each part of the of the geometry directly directly here you can also play more for example if i go okay go to the if I switch off the opacity and now I can for example right click to hide this block so this block which is showing and now I can see see inside you can switch from coloring of components so now I have only one component so one color to the to the block colors and each part of the geometry is highlighted in different color and you can really know which part is which and how to set up proper boundary conditions and so on and so on during the during the setuping phase of CFD simulation, which is, I think, in my opinion, which is really cool, and also for me, it it is really helpful helpful feature. Okay, so now this interaction is is a new feature. Then what we have is is a say part of of the boundary assignment. So in for example, for virtual tunnel simulation now we are we can assign a symmetry type to the symmetry plane so you can split in half your object and simulate only one half 
with the with the symmetry boundary condition and this cutting plane, let's say. So this can be done, done even for 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 virtual tunnel or, or for external external meshes or meshes created by SnapX mesh within the TCFD framework. Another feature is that the component connector now indicates which interfaces are already connected, which is also a really nice feature during the preparation of the of the simulation. So if I, for example, show this pump geometry, and I will go to the components again. Now we have, for example, this geometry has four components, and sometimes it is a bit tricky to connect each interfaces correctly. For example, here the volute has, for example, four inlets and outlets, and now it is hard to say which one was connected to which part. The connection is done by right click. So if, for example, I, would, I can visualize this interface. Yeah, this is the interface between the volute and the, some extension. So now if I click, if I use the right, mouse button now i see that this part was already connected to the volute extension so yeah i can check that this connection is really that it is connected that it is already connected connected and connected to the to the right part the same for for example inlet inlet pipe so this is this interface connected to the inlet tube and in the same way i think this is the interface between the volute and the impeller because because for example this is the geometry includes the leakage and the leakage is a part of the volute so now this part is for example connected to impeller so i think this is a really nice feature for checking the connection of of the interfaces okay so this was the connection then we have introduced new physical model called heat transfer and for this model, we have introduced new equation of state, so-called businesk, using the businesk approximation that the density is linearly depending on on the temperature gradient or the temperature difference. So this can be now set in the fluid properties. New physical models is the heat transfer. So in the previous version, there was just checkbox if it, if you if we would like to have the incompressible or compressible mode and now we can switch between between these three physical models and for each model now we have for example for this heat transfer we have now two equation of state this business approximation or standard perfect gas equation of state yeah so in the graphical user interface we can follow it here so i can go to the physics, to the fluid properties, and here we have incompressible, compressible, and heat transfer. And for equation of state, I can use perfect gas if the temperature differences are bigger, or if the temperature differences are low enough, we can can use this business approximation. So this was about the physics and equation of state, because we added this new heat transfer physical modeling. So we created also the new tutorial, room heat, we call it room heat transfer, which will be available soon, which, which basically includes a room <clears throat> equipped by several people and things. And on these things, we can assign also new boundary condition, which I, which I will present in a few moments. Okay, the next feature which is av available for physics is a passive color. So now you can add as many passive color fields as you want. So it's passive color, it's one way coupling. So each color doesn't influence the the other colors or or the nor the flow. Yeah, so it's just passive colors and you can edit in the physics in the fluid properties by checking this add passive colors and add as many scholars as you want. There are two, let's say, diffusivity types. First one is a constant, so you provide standard diffusivity, or you can go for turbulent, and then the diffusivities are taken from the physical model and is split it into the laminar and turbulent viscosity. And its magnitude can be, can be modified by the user. 
Yeah, so these two options are available. Again, for this passive scalar option, we will introduce the new intake manifold passive scalar tutorial, which 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 contains us, let's say, intake manifold geometry with two inlets. First one for the air, second one for the EGR, this exhaust gas recirculation component of, of car engines and other engines. So we can put two scholars each at each inlet and follow the mixing of them or follow the concentration, volumetric concentration at the outlets into the cylinders and so and so on. So you can now simulate also such such as simulations, both compressible or incompressible with temperature or without with heat transfer to the walls and so on. And for example, some screenshots screenshots of the simulations. And maybe now I can, for example, run a videos because you can also run such a simulation in transient. So we can also provide a transient boundary condition at the outlet and to really follow the concentration of EGR at each outlet to the, to the cylinders and optimize, for example, the inlet part or any anything you, you need to optimize in such a simulations. So this is also available now. Available now. <clears throat> okay, I think it's enough to this part. Because we added this heat transfer option, so we added also some some fields which will be evaluated during the simulation. One of them are these comfort parameters, which is called PMB on R and PPD, so predicted percentage of dissatisfied and predicted mean vote, which can be kind of post-processing based on the simulation. And the second and the third one. What, what can be uh, what can be now simulated is the age, so age of the air in the room to follow how fast the recirculation of the air in the room is performed, and for example to optimize the inlets and so on. So the setup can be done in the physics again in the fluid properties. So to calculate comfort, you you need just to check this. <clears throat> uh yeah this part of the setup and include several parameters from which which are used to 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 evaluate these comfort comfort parameters like comfort clothing metabolic rate external work and relative humidity comfort relative humidity so based on this during the simulation all these parameters are evaluated and can be visualized and followed everywhere so here are some yeah, details to it, which I think is not so important. For example, this predicted mean vote is is a range of from minus three to three, which 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 somehow indicates how satisfied or how satisfied in a sense of warm comfort the people are. And the same for dissatisfaction. What is <laughs> It's a bit funny that the lowest possible value is 5%, so always 5% of people in the room are not satisfied. <laughs> so, and maximum value, of course, is 100 because there can be every people can be dissatisfied with, with the temperature in the room, for example. These are some examples of the of the simulation of the new of the new tutorial. So, for example, temperature distribution this PMV distribution. So it seems that yeah, the value is something between minus one and zero, which is in the good range, let's say. This dissatisfaction is also pretty, pretty low for all the three people inside. And the age, the age of the air is visualized here. So this was the steady state simulation. So Therefore, the age is in this in these range ranges because it somehow they are somehow connected or these values are connected to the number of iterations. So this is the fresh air here, of course, because here is the inlet, and the air is pretty old in the corner here, for example. Okay, so this was connected to the physics, and now about the simulation. So we have introduced the options 
to let's say to modify the parameters of the linear solvers for the advanced users so now it is possible to modify the absolute residuals relative residuals and the final absolute tolerances for the transient simulations so this is for the advanced users now this can be modified and tuned directly in the graphical user interface now several boundary conditions which we have added so first one is the velocity profile so now the velocity profile can be can be defined by in general by a csv file so you can generate for example in the spreadsheet your profile based on your formula and put it into the tcfd as an initial condition so inside the inlet boundary condition you just choose the velocity profile you provide a csv file in the proper format and the, basically the format is that the first column is a is the distance or the coordinate distance or the coordinate of of the given direction i will explain and then for each take some kind of 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 relative coordinate you provide the absolute value of the velocity vector so for example i can go for this so for for some profile <clears throat> of the atmospheric boundary layer let's say you can you can create such a profile in csv files provide these distributions basically this is here and say along which direction the profile has to be developed so in here it is the z direction yeah? so therefore you will set this direction and basically the first column corresponds to the distance from the point 000, 000 along the direction yeah so which is basically in this case this is a z coordinate so this is the way how to preset the, the velocity profile of of any, any of any function because you first you generate the csv file simply in any spreadsheet program and then you can provide just the csv file and you can get something like this for example <clears throat> then we have new inlet outlet boundary conditions so first one is the fan pressure so this boundary condition can mimic a real fan characteristic so for example if you simulate a radial fan the best way with tcfd you will get the, the fan characteristic and this fan characteristic can be put as the inlet conditions and how it works so you, so you provide the fan pressure fan pressure characteristic in this format so basically it is a list of of volumetric flow rates and total pressure differences and, <clears throat> and then basically this boundary condition presets the total pressure at the inlet or at the outlet as as a as a some pre, uh, some reference pressure at the inlet with the delta delta pressure the with the difference of the total pressure obtained from from your characteristic and this is assigned iteration to iteration or time to time with respect to the volumetric flow rate yeah so basically you will have the real condition at the inlet based on the resistance of your of your geometry for example which follows the fun characteristics which can be also handy in the complex geometries then we have new let's say opening boundary condition which can be assigned to inlets and outlets so this boundary condition can be used for let's say for open domains where the direction of the flow is un unknown or the inlet and outlet patches are split in or it doesn't correspond to the inlet that there is no inlet flow at the whole surface of the inlet patch or outlet patch so this can be assigned this way so this is some some case we have some open propeller inside and which is which is closed in the huge sphere and we don't know the direction of the flow we don't know which part will be inlet which part will be the outlet so we can assign this opening boundary conditions both for inlet and outlet or it doesn't it doesn't matter which which inlet or outlet is assigned to these patches so basically you you assign 
for all these inlet and outlet like patches or, or boundaries, the opening, you provide the total pressure. So total pressure, if the flow goes inside, and in the same way, we provide the turbulent quantities for the inlet regions, and that's all. And you can simulate such such a simulation, so like like drone staying in the air and so on. And you will get something like this, some kind of like Faraday ball or something like that. <laughs> but you can see that really some parts are inlets and some parts are are outlet. And this is just zoom to see. To see the propeller. Yeah, so this is also possible now to simulate directly. Then we have provided several new wall boundary condition, conditions, mainly connected to the heat transfer and compressible simulations. So now you can prescribe, of course, adiabatic wall, which, which was also in the previous and only option in the previous simulation. But now you can directly set the temperature, heat flux, power, or heat transfer coefficient for some virtual wall. And for this heat transfer coefficient, you can, as, as I said, you can provide the heat transfer coefficient of the external virtual wall. You, can, you have to provide, of course, the ambient temperature, and you can also edit a virtual thickness with the given thermal conductivity. And you can simulate such, such walls, for example. So these are the new boundary conditions. Then at the interfaces, you can, or the users can now prescribe the pressure jump. It can be done pretty simple. So you can go, if your domain is con consists of more than, one, more than one component, then on the interfaces between the component, you can now prescribe a pressure jump, which is done pretty easy. You just choose a couple of interfaces on which you would like to prescribe the pressure jump and provide the value of this pressure jump. So this is a really, really simple example. So here it will be prescribed, I, I think, 1000 pascals as a pressure jump, and you can simulate such a such a geometry. Typically, if you have really complex, <clears throat> complex domain, for example, ventilation in the in the complex buildings which includes several fans. So these fans can be simulated as a pressure jumps, not, not the full geometry of the fan, which will be almost impossible to compute. So it, it, it could be a typical application of, of the pressure jump boundary condition. And I think this is almost the last one. We edit so-called calc surface quantities uh, utility or function which is a new feature which offers the export of forces at all the boundary patches. So it mainly serves as a support for external finite element analysis tools or fluid structure interaction tools. So it provides basically the CSV file for all boundaries, which contains the, the center of each phase, so each part of the boundary. It provides each component of the forces acting on the phase, on the on the on the given phase and the area of the phase, and from this information, or this information can be used and import into into I think into any finite element analysis softwares to to do the finite element analysis of your of your geometry. So this is ready for this export, and as a, as Lubos already pointed, because in the future we would like to also incorporate some uh, some FAI open source tools, which will be then connected automatically with 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 TCFD. And maybe the last one is just a, is a short or small improvement or small feature. So transient residuals. Now you can follow during the transient run. You can also follow the transient residuals at the end of each time of each iteration. For a given time step, so which is basically here, and of course you can follow any other quantities, which will be already already introduced in the previous version. Okay, so I think this was the main features of TCFD, and now we start now now it is time to go back to Lubosch to conclude and 
wait for the wait for the wait for your questions. So Lubosh, are you ready? Are you, yes. are you there? <laughs> yes, yes, I am ready. Right. Thank you for your contribution. It was it was great. Great to see it, see it from such a perspective in a webinar. Thank you, Eric, so much. And uh, I, I think we can we can keep keep the uh, I mean the the presentation uh, on your side. And uh, we, we just announced that now it's the Q and A part comes. So we would like to ask the audience. We would like we would like to ask all of you to to ask your questions. We will do our best to answer your questions. And uh, uh, yeah, so please ask your questions, and we will we will we will answer them. Uh, so yeah, nice. Yeah, nice visualization of, of the intake. Yeah, new yeah, tutorial, yeah, yeah. right? Thank yeah, you, Alec. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, looks looks nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have to say, I can't see any any question uh, right now at the moment. So yeah, so let's 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 wait a couple of seconds. I can see that there are quite some people here. So I guess okay, as the, the 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 yeah, the question starts. They 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 start coming. So. Uh, yeah, I need to open this. Yes. So uh, yeah, does the sol uh, uh, question from Eric? Does the solver support uh, the Poros media? Uh, uh, I think I, I, I think not directly. The Porosity is not included directly, but but the, it's it's easy to to edit via a user defined function. So maybe maybe that, that it's it's definitely possible. It's and it's not not a big deal. Poros Media, it's it's on the list to in, include it into the into the graphical interface. It's not there yet, but it's easy to do that. Uh, they are they are function which which is which is very straightforward. So I I, I think yes, it's, it's the Poros Media are supported. Yes, they are. Uh, uh, the next question from uh, Mr. Volante uh, is possible to simulate a. Uh, Recirculate problem with fan pressure curve. Uh, if 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 this means the 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 secondary flow path, then then yes. Uh, the, if uh, I mean the 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 flow coming back uh, back to the to the inlet of the impeller, so yes, then then it is possible. Uh, uh, and the next question from Tom: uh, Will you include the adjoint shape optimization plots? From Open from 1906 uh, and the upcoming morphing. Uh, well, diffi it's difficult to say. We haven't seen that, uh, so it's difficult to say. Of course, of course, the the adjoint optimization is 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 uh, it's a trend, and and we follow follow this trend uh, very carefully. And you can be sure if something real will be around, we will we will or yeah, we will take a look. Uh, okay. Uh, Professor Bernd Bointing is asking uh, if it is possible to track the droplets, which is uh, well. Radek, what do you think? Uh, what, what, what can we track here? <laughs> well, <clears throat> track droplets. It depends. What does it mean? If yeah, 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 there, yeah. It's no direct direct solver now, but for example, in a Lagrangian sense, if the droplets, the amount of droplets are low, there are features how to how to incorporate the Lagrangian approach, for example, but not really straightforward. And if there are many of them, for example, some <clears throat> uh, if in sense of Eulerian approach, if there are many of them, the the such of such solver is not yet implemented in TCFD, and so it depends. What does it mean, yeah? And what is the approach, yeah. and what 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 is the task? But not okay. directly, not directly. Okay. And some application can be via the scripting can be, I think, incorporated. And some some physics, which is more complex, is I would say is not not directly can be directly implemented. Yeah, but it, I think it's a general question. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, so we can we can we, we, it, by the way, Ben is our, our client so we can we can discuss with him uh, okay, uh yeah, later yeah. via email. Uh great. Uh, 
Okay, so Radek, do, do, can you can you see any any other question you you'd like to answer? We have a couple of questions right now. So, uh, I, okay, I, I maybe the the buses the buses okay. is asking about the 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 the, the heat transfer. Or maybe you can answer this question. Okay, what was the typical time to complete the simulation? Well, it, it depends. It depends. For example, for the for this room simulation in the steady state, it was I think about seven two hours, let's say. But the mesh was counts more than six million of, of cells, so more than let's say two hours on our on our CPU. What is the dimension of this room? Oh, Lubos, you know, so it's five meters, right? Five, five, five three five. meters. Uh, meters. Quite, quite small, small room, like, 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 like a bedroom or something. Yes, yes. Or, yes. or a little, little office. Yes. Um, and if okay. PPD and PMV are accordance as per some guideline, uh, my colleague will will know it, and I think sure, sure, the sure. formula will be in the in the manual. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it. But okay. it will be it will be obvious for for from the manual, right? Okay. okay. So so Jose, Jose is asking uh, yeah yeah Jose is asking uh, about the the possibility to use uh, his own models, uh, which is not available in 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 uh, TCFD uh, directly. Uh, I would say very very likely. Yes, we have we have special uh, scripting uh, system in Python included in TCFD, so very likely yes. But we, we would definitely need to need to know the details. Details I, I can see it's sludge sedimentation, for example. Okay, I would I would need to know even more details. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But for example, in general, we can add a, a solver. Yeah, user-defined solver. For example, it is really advanced. And if you create new solver, it can be incorporated here directly in the GUI, right? And the other stuff can be incorporated via the scripting option. Yeah. Yeah, for example. OK. So uh, Maxim, hi, Maxim. Uh, he, he's asking uh, about the, the, the conjugate heat transfer. Is it possible to include the real solid bodies uh, as well as uh, the mesh? Uh, and not at the moment. It, it's, it's definitely. A, uh, it's a plan for the next version. I, I'll be speaking a little bit about it still in this webinar, later in this webinar. So um, not not yet. The the it's it's just CFD. The CFD is just CFD, and uh, for for the solid bodies and for the like FSI for for the interaction with solids, there will be other tools which are already already on the way. They they work in the manual manual way right now, but they are not not on the table right now. I would say, but but they are definitely on the way. And maybe I, I could say that, that it would be possible in a simple way, but we we we, we didn't go that way, and, and we we decided to make it a, a big way. So so give, give it give it some so give us please give us some some extra time to make this happen. Okay okay. So Radek, do you, can can you see any any question you you'd like to answer answer right now? Uh, that I, I can see a question from Eric. Uh, who he's asking was the main difference to the to the to the uh, commercial codes available in the market. Uh, mm -hmm. The main difference is uh, it, it, it's definitely uh, TCFD is unlimited. It's based on open source. It's flexible and it's it's uh, a smart new software. So it's uh, it's this. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, Radek. So, can you see a question you, you'd like to to answer right away, which which makes all of all of us happy? Well, <laughs> well, there. Yeah. Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe we can okay. we can quit this. Uh, yes. As, as, as I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I'm just. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm reading the question, so I'm okay, a little okay. bit <laughs> delayed. Okay. No, no, no. It's okay. So. Uh, I suggest that we will we will quit this at this point. As I promised in the beginning, all the questions will be answered uh, as as much as we can. So uh, I mean, as, as much in the, the complexity would be as 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 deep as 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 possible, and all the questions will be answered. And now we will we will 
we will finish we, we will finish the webinar so so please don't leave it because there is still some information to to say uh okay i'm radic i'm taking back the presentation so i'm okay. um it seems i am now can you see my screen by the way uh, yes yes i can okay okay Go so th so this was the q a session and i have a little little few little things to say um maybe maybe we could take a little bit uh we could take a little look into into the future and uh, i would like to to mention that that th this was the new new release of this tcfd right and at cfd support we keep working hard all the time of course and we have big goals for the future and we are already in the process of creating a new complex software um, and soon we would like to deliver a comprehensive simulation platform rather than just a CFD code. Uh, and uh, the new simulation platform is called TCAE and it's a smart interconnection of many open source projects to deliver a single comprehensive engineering workflow. The CFD, TCAE, I'm sorry, <laughs> includes uh, several independent modules. We call them verticals. And each module can operate as a part of a highly automated process or as a standalone tool. That's very important. So all of these verticals can be standalone tools or will be or are standalone tools or they, they, can, they can work together. So for example, uh, this ticket uh, would be for geometry preparation, cleaning and pre-processing. Uh, TCFD, as you know, it will, will be uh, uh, for CFD simulations. The FAE will be uh, for structural analysis. The TMESH module will be a very important part. Uh, TMESH will be, in fact, a laboratory for of mesh creation, operation, and conversion, and, and mesh evaluation. Its user can pick a preferred meshing uh, method or tool, and there will be several open source codes included, and uh, as well as there will be a support for high-end commercial codes for meshing. And the whole workflow will be managed uh, by the automated master process, which communicates the results with the database and the CAE will, uh, will still keep its modularity as, as we, we, we communicated uh, for a long time and it will be able to, to be used inside any other workflow which, we, which exists already. And regarding this, we have two ways of thinking now. We have two ways of development. It's the horizontal development, which, which is adding the new tools and new simulation plugins and adding the complexity to the, to the process and vertical development, which is adding new applications, new capabilities and adding new high, high tech, high end methods. Okay, so our presentation is approaching to its end. I would like to finish with a little story from Cat Market. Maybe you still remember that 20 years ago, everyone had used AutoCAD for CAT operations. It, its market share was great at that time and uh, its position looked like untouchable, but times are changing very quickly. The world has changed. The times we are living in are very dynamic and nowadays, Aut AutoCAD is certainly not that good anymore. And there are others. There are others who were small uh, 20 years ago, but, or they, maybe they did not even exist 20 years ago, but they reflected the change of our time. They reinvented the value for the customer and, and they made it, they made it to deliver it to the, to the market and they are big now. And my point is that I deeply believe that the same change is going to, to happen in a CFD market, it's going on right now. Uh, with, I believe that CFD market is the younger and nicer sister of cat market, and it's always a little bit behind. And this is this is exactly why we are here. We are here to allow this change happen also in the cat market. So I will really finish with uh, with those who already share our visions with us. So many others are already on their way. Every one of you is welcome in our family. The bigger we are, the stronger we are. So feel free to join us. And I think this is gonna be really it from today's webinar. Feel free to, 
to tell us how we can support you in your projects. It's our job and also a pleasure, so feel free to contact us. Uh, Radek, would you, would you conclude? Yeah, just let me thank you. Let me just say, <clears throat> let me thank you to all the to the audience for the patient and for the interest. And we would be happy if you, if if you contact us to discuss your topics, your problem, or any any other topic in, connected to TCFD and CFD in general. Okay, so thank you and bye bye. Okay, thank you, Radek. So we leave you with that. So thank you for now and bye bye.